Okay, uh, I guess I'm going to touch upon another slightly touchy subject, but probably for no good reason, but I, I guess there are reasons. I had one of my regulars ask me what the difference between a Negro and a Negrito was and if there was any connection. And uh, so this article is going to be about that, and uh, if you want to see a min municipality, you look at El Negrito, and El Negrito is a part of Honduras itself, where they had darker land, and it doesn't have to do with black people. There's also a Lesonia bird, which is a black bird. The Andean Negrito is Lesonia aureus, which, so it's like an Oriole. And then the Austral Negrito is Lesonia rufa, showing that it has a redness to it. So it's an all-black thing, but what's the unique standout? Whenever they give Latin names to things, they quite often use this. And, of course, there's a lot of Latin that is still in Spanish languages. And at one time, it was trying to bring everyone together. But then uh, there were some problems, I'll just say it that way, without going into depth into it. And then the language disintegrated quite rapidly because of those. Um, you don't want to confuse Negritos with the Pygmy people of Central uh, Africa. Um, that term, Pygmy, though, is a stature size and not an exact people. You can say, these are a Pygmy over here, those are a Pygmy over there. It's almost like, um, forgive me, it's almost like saying, yeah, here's a black midget, here's a, or a dwarf, here's a Asian dwarf, here's so on like that but so it's not really pinning out a necessarily people and should not be confused with these pygmyism is considered to be the phenotype of endemic short stature for populations of adult men where men's always taller than the women you see so uh, are an average less than 150 centimeters tall so um that's like that's like right oh that's under five foot what is it Lucas? like four foot nine four foot something right up in that range four foot nine four ten Anyhow, I can't do the scale. We, we tried to go metric here in America, but nah, we got stuck on the old stuff, which is actually the old stuff is what the English people that went on metric tried to go with. But uh, funny, our old stuff is based on 12s, is in inches and so on like that, and that actually keeps the old ways, the, the old ways. Yeah, it goes all the way back to 12 disciples and 12 zodiacal symbols and all that, but we're not going into that, are we? Uh, I'm, I'm stretching. I'm always throwing out little shoots here. So let's not confuse it with those people. But what we are looking at or into here is ancient populations of pygmy people, which these are adults right here. And I don't know if it shows. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, you can see it. So here's a white man. I'm just going to say he's six foot tall. Hell, he may be five nine. I don't know. But we're going to say he's six foot tall. But you can see these people here. They're all under five foot primordial. And I don't know. This guy right here is reaching five foot. This guy here is... Oh, he's over five foot tall. Unless, you know, unless that guy's only like five, six, five, eight, then then that guy's almost five foot tall. And then these guys are four and so on and everything, but pygmies. So it's a pygmiatic population, and it looks somewhat negroid. And in the ancient days, they thought, well, look, these are black people. Everybody with the black sp skin must be connected in some way, you know. People are just trying to figure out the peopling of the world. You know, they referred to Indians as more of a red and skin people, Asians a little more yellow and so on. And that's just really some slight variation in skin colors and so on. But uh, this was kind of before they had too much archaeology really going on. I mean, we're, we're only looking at in a timeline of people just uh, within 100 years or so, they don't find dinosaurs, you know, and then the whole idea comes out of that. Uh, people don't realize it nowadays, but a few hundred years ago, you know, the people were trying to call those things the bones of giants and Jesus horses and things like this. Yeah, they did, you know, and, and, and all all kinds of weird things, but di the name dinosaur was eventually coined and so on, and people started realizing geology and things in the real timeline of Earth, and that it didn't really fit a biblical timeline, so people have tried to adopt that like crazy, but I digress on Easter. Anyhow, um, their current population you find of these people are quite spread out a little bit that are somewhat related to each other, and that shows you that they at that time did have a boat I've had debates three or four times with these people trying to say they must have been there and then formed separately when all the Pangea was together and then it separated and so on and go, well, we think Pangea happened about here and these people are about way close to now, but also 30,000 years. And so we go through the last ice age and was, was, it, was the ice and the water level drawn down enough to where it made land all the way across and the continent of Mu and all that we hear about? No, not to these islands. So these people had a damn boat. 
but they're like, well, there, there was no boats before. Yeah, and, yeah I've, you know how long I've dealt with there were no boats before? Well, here's one on a wall. Now, they say in here it's 16,000 B.C., and there's a boat. Oh, well, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. anyhow. It's funny, in different insular little areas that they have of archaeology and so on, they have developed a belief that has a dating to it. They're not willing to deviate, and then other people totally do. I mean, you find an ancient boat historian, and he'll go all crazy about reed boats and all this stuff and ancient drawings and everything, whereas the other people would say, well, the Egyptians, and it's like, well, the Sumerians before that, and then here's one on a cave wall at 16,000 B.C., Oh, wait, here's another one that's over 30,000, but now you don't want to say it's a damn boat. Yeah, there's a cow over there, too. There's a horse. Now, nobody's riding it at this point, but I can show you cave art where there looks like a man riding a horse. What's up with that? Well, they dated the damn thing. Anyhow, let's get off of that. Let's just go back into this. Surely I digress. Negrito are several ethnic groups who inhabit associated parts of the region known today as Austronesia. So it's Australia and the Nesiatic Islands that lead up through Sumatra and Bali and things like that, right? And part of the Philippines. And also small island here off of South America and also a few pointed islands here in Fiji and a few others that are set out here, Solomon Islands and so on. And uh, so... 396 million people scattered throughout these islands, though, is what they're going with. Their current populations include the Andamanese, I'm sorry, Andamanese people, the various indigenous peoples of the Andaman Islands, and they're a, a black population, but they are pygmatic here. And it's a, you can find them in Andabar and Nicobar Islands, Union Territory, southwestern part of the Bay of Bengal. Also, we're talking about, well, they're, they're going to show the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and these little separated archipelagos that people couldn't have gone from here to there to there to there without having boats. And is that a sea? Well, yeah, it's the South China Sea. Oh, okay, then they had seaworthy boats. Well, how far do you think back they go? Well, archaeology says they've been there for almost 32,000 years. So they had a boat 32,000 years ago. No, 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 no. Anyhow, the Simang, which you can see here, here's a tall white man, I guess he's over six foot tall, and these smaller people, he's standing up, they're sitting down. Manique peoples of South Thailand, this one has a unique thing to it because it's up in Thailand, and it's up to Asiatics, who had interaction with Proto-Indo-Europeans. I'll show you that. The Manic and Mani are an ethnic group of Thailand. They are more widely known in Thailand as the Sakai, and we've talked about Sakai and Sakasunis. But the Manique disliked the word Sakai because it's derogatory, implying slave or barbarism, which these people had felt they were under during a short time and then left alone by Proto-Indo-Europeans that left them with a swastik and a bunch of other things that I've talked about in other videos, but let's not go into that here. They are the only Negrito group in Thailand, and they speak Manique. It's a Mon language of the Asian people, so they've adopted a different language than all the other people that are in this that you see. So this is the, a far-reaching point of them and not necessarily mm, them okay but then because they're not in a group they've come from somewhere and they say they've come from out of Africa way long ago whenever they try to put everybody in the out of Africa type of theme but it doesn't go so much there's also Aida people that you can see and they're up in the Philippines they find them in the mountains of Luzon which is one of the major islands in the Philippines and the Ati people here and they have connections to the Aita people and I guess you'd find that in names but they're concentrated on a few small islands like Bora K, where Bora is like Bora Bora, and K is what we call coral reef islands and smaller islands. Pene, and that's like the language of the Philippines and stuff, and Negros Island, which I'm guessing implied either darker soil or maybe the population there was darker than the other two in some fashion, or there was a larger population of them there. They're ethnically related to other Negrito ethnic populations in the Philippines, such as the Aida, it says. So. Then we also have ethnic groups of the Philippines. And if we'll look at this, man, I don't even go to this whole page here. God, that's so small in the screen. Let me zip. Here we go. Uh, if you look, there's a huge amount of variation they found in the Philippines. And this is something that the geneticists are looking at. And especially because some of these haplogroups 
should be extremely primitive still like they didn't have the further development that a lot of others did and there seems to be weird mixes that go on through it and it just seems you know quite strange and uh, variations on a theme if you will and it must harken back to this island attacking that island and doing things kind of Gilligan Island is it if you will way back oh I don't know maybe 20 30 thousand years ago and then leading up into a more modern time but it shows odd things I think if I'm not wrong that in this this is Luzon here and so this is the black population that's up there and it's shown in that tan in gold color that tan and then that tan shown here and here and the gold shown here too so these are like the populations that are out of there I believe a few of these are also this color but I can't see them and I think a few of those are the islands we were just talking about there but then in between it's all Asiatics with slight variations on a theme and that's a whole nother video drastically whole nother video anyhow so that's kind of the people that we're looking at now let's look at that word and how everything goes and just go through this the word negrito is a spanish diminutive of negro so that's where you get this concept of it and so you find these little black people here's another picture here showing you an ancient little pygmy population here full adults going on but look this guy here well, he doesn't look like he's maybe five 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 eight but these kids look taller. Who knows? They may be standing up on something a little bit taller. You can see stuff down here. I don't know if they're standing on something, but because it looks like their belly is up this high, which is way above that guy's waist, and he's still, I don't know, maybe there are some that are taller than that, but we're looking at a major population that's under five foot. And so pygmies, basically. Now, this usage was coined in the 16th century. Spanish missionaries operating in the Philippines and was borrowed by other European travelers and colonists across Austral and Asia to label various peoples perceived as sharing relatively small physical stature and this darkened skin and it seemed to go in together and uh, so that name kind of stuck over time. Contemporary usage of an alternate Spanish epithetic Negrillos is also tended to bundle these people in together with the pygmy peoples of Central Africa based on perceived similarities in stature and complexion. Well, they're both dark skin and they're both little people. And so that's where these people came from. And then I can show you where they used to think that at some time. And then they looked at the cranial forms of them. They said, no. And then they said, well, something must have happened different. Then they found them up to 30,000 years ago. Then genetics shows us something quite different, but we'll get there here in a second. <coughs> So it's all based on similarities to what they had in, in stuff, but historically the label Negrito has occasionally been used to refer to African pygmies also. And so you'll see that in some ancient maps because it was during the timing whenever people thought these things. The appropriateness of using the label Negrito to bundle peoples of different ethnicities based on similarities to stature and complexion has been challenged and yeah, now genetics has shown us that they're not even related to each other much less even just like the West Africans, they can tell you pretty much where you're from and they know they're not related to the Khoisan or the East Africans that are Negroids. And so you can see the difference of that situation and, but they can also see the Bantu expansion clearly from out of more Western Africa down into South Africa where most of them are now and into Eastern Africa and they can see the difference of the two clearly and uh, craniometry helps you with a lot of things like this but then of course genetics can really peg it a little bit more and, and, and better and as we get better and better at it it becomes more refined most Negrito groups lived as hunter gatherers some also used agriculture most think that it was brought to them in some way or shown to them in some way by other people that were traveling island to island today most Negrito tribes live assimilated to the majority population of the homeland they're in Discrimination and poverty are often problems. Hmm, that sounds too reflective. Um, today, most Negro people live in assimilated to the majority populations of the people that they ended up at. They really weren't their populations. They're a minority in that, and they seem to feel that due to their primitiveness and things like that, that discrimination and poverty are often the problems that go along with it. Sometimes it gets to the point to where you, they start claiming totally non-related people. Like you'll hear the American blacks talk about they were the Egyptians and they were like, even the people out of the Bible. You hear the Moors, basically anybody that has tanner skin than a Nordic and they try to claim it. No, wait, I'm sorry. They've claimed the Vikings too. I can show you that in a video, but that's neither here nor there. 
Genetics, the Y chromosome haplogroup CM130. Man, I'm hoping 7 Phoenician 7, who is well versed in genetics, and also a couple of my other guys that I have as regulars can maybe chime in on what this means and who separates from who and, you know, things like that. Because I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, we, I can just yip this stuff off like crazy. As seen, for example, the Semang of Malaysia are haplogroup DM174 among Andaman Islanders are more prominent among Negritos than the general population surrounding them. Haplogroup OP31 is common among Afro-Asiatic speaking Negrito peoples such as the Manik and the Semang. Aida men are of the greatest interest to genetic, anthropological, and historical researchers because at least 83% of them belong to haplogroup K2b in the form of its rare primary clad, so extremely archaic. Still, K2b1 and P. And so they tell you that's aka K2b2, R2d2, K2b2 and PP295. By the way, what genetic signature is R2b2? What about R2D2? They don't have that, but what is R2B2? Most Aida males, 60%, carry KP397. I guess I could highlight these and stuff and see, but all it's going to show you is more complex things out of it. And I guess if I really studied this on my own, I might start to glean something out of it, but I'm full of other type of information, not going with genetics so much, but this will be classified in my genetics, it says. They'll tell you this K3, uh, P397 or K2B1, which is otherwise uncommon in the Philippines. So this is a strange rarity. And is a strongly associated with indigenous peoples of Melanesia and Micronesia. So off to the islands here. Now they're not going to show you the spans of them here. Yeah, there you go. Melanesia and often here in these small islands of Melanesia and Micronesia which don't quite reach Tahiti or Borneo or even Tonga really but Fiji, Vanuatu and places do contain this set. Um, basal P, so archaic P, is rare outside the Aita and some other groups within maritime Southwest, A Southwest Asia, so Southeast Asia. So this might indicate that that's what that number exactly holds to is P. And uh, it's one out of the Philippines. I, I can see where they would probably put that letter on it. Also, don't they letter them as they find them, as they start to investigate them and so on. That's why you have A, B, C, D, and it just goes through. Genetic research has shown that the Negritos have existed as a separate group for a long time, comparable to the Australaloid and Southwest Pacific groups. So like your Fiji Islanders and so on, and uh, Southwest Pacific. Tahiti, things along that line, to the people there maybe, and how they were separated for a long time, but had gotten there in boats that long, long time ago. Again, we're like, oh, they they floated, they grabbed a hold of a whale, and they, uh, right, yeah, okay, so, anyhow, they've existed as a separate group for a long time. In fact, researchers say it's back to the point of being proto, back to the point of edging into homo out of hominids, and that actually these groups are not connected and therefore it's been known for a long time once we finally got to really checking it out Australians aren't black Africans and neither are any of these islanders in truth of fact in fact there's an extreme variation in Africa itself on what's going on there and that marveled people and still to this day does on how there's so much variation it's not one homogenous society but quite a bit different. In fact, the pygmy population was one of the standouts that started out. And then once these Caucasian people started running all over the place and found them other places, they were like, what? And then tried to figure it out from there. Some people still crutch on the information from back then, like it's still valid. Like somehow past that point, we didn't figure out things that were much, much more valid. Anyhow, this has often been interpreted as the effect that they are remnants of the original expansion from Africa, some 70 thousand years ago. Studies in osteology, craniometry, and cranial shapes, dental morphology have connected the sim name to Australian populations, or Australoid, while connecting the Andamese to Africans in craniometry to the South Asians in dental morphology, and the Philippine Negritos to Southeast Asians. A possible conclusion to, uh, to this is that it dispersed of mitochondrial haplogroup B41 
uh, B4, A, 1A, is connected to the distinction between Philippine and the other Negritos, if you follow me. So through a matrilineal lineage, the change happens, and that happens in a few places. However, another study suggests that the Anga, indigenous to Little Adaman Island, are more closely related to the Southeast Asians than they are of the present-day South Asians, and that the Great Andamese appear to have received a degree of relative recent admixture, recent, from adjacent regional populations, but also share a significant degree of genetic ancestry with other Malaysian Negrito groups. So this is that dispersal weird thing I'm talking about and how it seems like it went on for a long time. And again, how would you get from that island to that island? And you know, somebody goes, boat, and they're like, no, you know, and you're Hulk mad. <laughs> here we go again with the, you can have these people on an island and switch them from here to here, but they can't have either one of them have a damn boat. So how does that happen? Well, tornadoes pick them up like the land of Oz and drop them in that island. And then after they get mixed, it only picked up the mixed ones and it drops them back over here. And then global warming starts, you see. Okay, Bullbeck 2013 likewise noted that the Andamanese nuclear DNA clusters with that of other Andamanese islanders as they carry a haplogroup DM174. And they pinpoint this as a strange interjection somehow and maternal mitochondrial haplogroup M unique to their own. However, this is a subclad of the D haplogroup which has not been seen outside of the Andamans, a fact that underscores the insularity of these tribes, in other words, separated, segregated in themselves for a long, long time. Analysis of the mtDNA, which is inherited exclusively by maternal or motherly descent, confirms the above results. So all Onge belong to M32 MT DNA, a subgroup of M, which is unique to the Onge people, different than the others. Their parental Y DNA is exclusively haplogroup D, which is uh, found also only found in Asia. Right? So it's strange, but then people thought they were all kind of, you're all the same variations on a theme, but once they look at the variations, they're like, well, this one's got mixed from, wow, and they're starting to figure out more and more. Once we get better at it, we'll even probably understand more, and then we can, with genetics, almost tell a history that's before recorded time. It greatly enhances it a lot. A study of human blood group systems and proteins in the 1950s suggested that the Andamanese people were closely related to the Oceanic peoples than any African pygmy peoples. Genetic studies on Filipino Negritos based on polymorphic blood enzymes and antigens showed that they were similar to the surrounding population and so it must have been influx locally. Negrito peoples may, uh, peoples may descend from Australoid Melanesian settlers of Austronesia. Despite being isolated, the different peoples do share genetic similarities with their neighboring populations. They also share relevant phenotypic uh, or anatomic variations which require expl explanations. In contrast, a recent genetic study found that unlike other groups in Melanesia or early groups in Melanesia, and Melanesia, Andamanese Negritos lack Denisovan hominin admixture, the ancient Denisovan hominid admixture, PEG, which shows to run down and through these islands, and apparently it showed up, let's see if I can get back on it, won't do it, but I guess if you look at it here, mm, it's not going to let me focus in on it here, but it can show you, uh, if you look on the right side bar there, Neanderthal and Dianisovan had gotten together in certain part. Homo heidelbergensis interjects in there, and Homo erectus runs through the portion here. And then we find where the red band is, is where Homo heidelbergensis had had its foray, and Neanderthal above um, and up in Anatolia and above than that somewhat. But then those people had come down into North Africa too afterwards in a double flux. You see Denisovans running all the way over and down into the islands. But there's this one weird peak that runs it up and runs it up to the northeastern oh, edge of China and Russia. 
and that leads you to believe that's how those people up there perhaps have that darker skin even though they're living up in the Arctic whenever people back then and even some still now think that darker skin is really just all about the equator because Caucasians notice that when they, they live near the equator they have a lot darker skin through the summers because they're having it for longer but now we realize that there's a natural tan or olive in this to skin where we've known it for a long time and then there's other people that really have it stuck it's not some type of ad adaptable changing darkness and tanning of their skin although the lighter they are the more they can still tan somewhat and that shows you a strange interjection there now they say that they have that Denisovan hominin admixture in their DNA Denisovan ancestry are they lack that let me re-clarify re that they these early groups in Malaysia, the Andaminos, the Andamanese Negritos, lack Denisovan hominid admixture in their DNA. Denisovan ancestry is found among indigenous Melanesian and Aboriginal Australian populations. So even of Australia, it's a Denisovan mix, as I've been saying, four to six percent. It doesn't really show up in some of the other guys. Some studies have suggested that each group should be considered separately as a genetic evidence as the genetic evidence refutes the notion of a specific shared ancestry between the Negrito groups of the Andaman Islands, the Manai Palencia, and then the people of the Philippines. Indeed, this sentiment is echoed in a more recent work from 2013, which concludes that at the current level of genetic resolution, there is no evidence of a single ancestral population for the different groups traditionally defined as Negritos. A number of features in anthropology would suggest that a common origin of the Negrito are the Negrillo, including short stature, dark skin, scant body hair, as most Negroids don't grow facial hair unless they have admix, chin beards and things like that. You can see it with the Khoisan where it's extremely scant too. But they also have occasional Stetopigia, and Stetopigia is whenever all of a sudden out of nowhere you get somebody that's got a real fat butt on them like that. You know, it's a it's uh, kind of common though, and it's real common in Caucasians, although today they diet and fight it like crazy. A woman who's been a mother is generally going to start looking like that somewhat. Stetopegia is actually a genetic situation where it gets extremely exaggerated. So it's not necessarily the ancient Venus statues where you see this overhealthy woman that's meant to be kept overhealthy, for she is the mother. Um, but more of a similar concept but in Stetopegia. The claim that these Andamanese more uh, closely resemble African pygmies than other Australasian populations in their cranial morphology in a study in 1973 added some weight to this theory and this is kind of pre-genetics. Before genetic study pointed to a closer relationship with their neighbors. Multiple studies show that Negritos from Southeast Asia and New Guinea share a closer cranial affinity with Austro-Melanesians. Taiwan, it's uh, said that in Taiwan, which is again that unique, Negritos may have also lived in Formosa, Taiwan. The Negrito population shrank to the point that up to a hundred years ago, only one small group lived the, near, near the Sayasayat tribe, which has a strange name that doesn't sound like it's supposed to be from there. Evidence of their former habitation is a Sayasayat festival celebrating that the black people in the festival are called Pastai. And if we look at that, this is a celebration. This is a celebration of the little people and actually the smallest people of the village that are more adults really take part in this and celebrate a people that they called the wee people or little people that used to live there and uh, kind of neat they still have a festival during that time of the year I don't know how to go into that but it was a tribe that commemorates the little black people they say used to live near them San anthropologists believe that they may have been a tribe of the Negritos or proto-Australasian people who lived on the edge of Taiwan years ago possibly ar arriving during the southern dispersal so here we can see the southern dispersal of these clads running through and off of India and really never getting up into the upper part except for R and N and a few others. So strange dispersal, 60,000 years ago. So somewhere between 60 and 70,000 years ago, you start seeing a lot of this, but 
a lot of things can actually happen during a 10,000 year period for we don't even have 10,000 years of recorded time recorded it's hard to get anything worth speaking of past about 3500 BC short of small things and then it's pottery shards and conjecture but genetics and the bones of those people you find in craniometry can show you a lot of things craniometry leads you a certain way genetics says this is the way once we get it all figured out again it's going to be a whole lot better for um, I guess all of us trying to figure out where everything already started at so you, uh, looking into this though you can see some of these old journals and things will tell you uh, Africans in Asia the discourse of Negritos and that it really is not Africans in Asia but they explain out into it and stuff and how it all works out in the peopling of the archipelago of South Asia and these other studies from 2013 and somewhat newer studies and uh, I really ought to quit looking at so much archaeological journal stuff because it's pretty much been picked flat. I keep picking through larger articles and dissertations trying to find one little piece or one little thing. Genetics sometimes just goes bam. It, that's it. Game over. Bam. You know, and then maybe if, if you know that, then we look at the other information and you'd be like, well, this must have happened. Something you may not have even really known before in any way. But anyhow, so I, I, I'm guessing, you know, one of my regulars had asked for this, and I, I, I like the guy a lot. So um, I thought I'd put this out, but Negritos, no, they're not related to Negros, not so much. In fact, no. In fact, all the black people of the islands in Fiji and the ones that do run up into Asia, when you hear them say, oh, we were in Asia, it's like, you're not we. Are you looking at an article from 1783? Because... Shortly after that, they figured out no, and recently they figured out no, 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 that's not the way it works out. In fact, it's, it's this unique, strange thing that all happened, and I guess I'll just leave it right there, guys. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Peace.